All right, everyone, we ease into chapter three with a review of what should be a really comfortable topic for you by now, quadratic functions and graphs. Um, we're gonna take it a step further. We're going to do a little bit more than we did in the previous unit, um, but you're gonna, you should be really comfortable with, with the main concepts today. All right, so a quadratic function is a second degree polynomial the shape of its graph is a parabola. And I guess it would not hurt right here to go ahead and throw in a graph of our parent function. f of x equals x squared is our parent quadratic function. Um, we know that for our quadratic function, our domain is all real numbers, and once something starts all real numbers, it is always all real numbers. The domain for every quadratic function will be all real numbers. Range has a limit. That limit can change depending on transformations. Okay, there are two basic forms of our quadratic equation. We're gonna work with the standard form, which is also, I tend to call it the graphing form because it yields itself to graphing really, really well. And then we're gonna talk about the general form. So our graphing form of our quadratic equation is this, f of x equals, and we've got it all divided out so that you know your pattern of transformations by now, you know what a, h, and k give us. Now the location of the vertex is found by those values h, k, our horizontal shift and our vertical shift. So for example, for, um, for this example that we've got here, our horizontal and vertical shifts, our horizontal shift is to the right three and our vertical shift is up eight. So instead of our vertex being at the origin like it is for our parent function, our vertex is moved to three, eight. Oh, look at that, list transformations. So we go right three units, we go up eight units, and that coefficient out front, that two, gives me a vertical, it's a whole number greater than one, so it's a vertical stretch that by a factor of two. All right, here's some new stuff. Now, we've talked about the fact that our parent quadratic function is symmetric about the y-axis. It's an even function. That parabola, though, is always going to be symmetric to something. If I move it away from the y-axis, so for example, right here, I've got my function that has a vertex at 3, 8. It's going to open up, and it's going to be skinny because it's stretched by a factor of 2. This is no longer centered on the y-axis, so this is no longer an even function, but it does have symmetry. I can still fold my parabola right down the middle, and I have this axis of symmetry, x equals something. That's my axis of symmetry. Now my vertex is at 3, 8 for this function, which means this x-coordinate is 3, and that gives me the location for my axis of symmetry. That axis of symmetry is always the vertical line that goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. So when I know the vertex, I also know my axis of symmetry. That equation that gives me the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals h, where h is the horizontal shift for my vertex. Now, maximum or minimum, the lowest or highest value of my function that is at k occurs at the vertex. Now again, where does k come from? It comes from the vertex, but now we're talking about the function value. What's the highest function value if my parabola goes up like a hill? The lowest function value if my parabola goes down like a valley. So right here, that is the value of the minimum. That value 8 is the value of the minimum. So for my example, f of x has a minimum value. It reaches down to a lowest point 
at x equals 3, and that value for that minimum is 8. When you're answering those questions, make sure that you read closely so that you know you answer the correct way. So that's all dealing with my graphing form, or standard form of the equation, right there. And you know what? I've got a highlighter. Let's go ahead and um, highlight that so that we can go back and we can see it easily. There's that standard form or graphing form of my equation. And then down here, we've got the general form of our equation. The other form is the general form of our equation. And it should look familiar to you too. ax squared plus bx plus c, we saw that when we set up to do the quadratic formula, except we had our y value equal to zero, our function value equal to zero. Now in this case, the form of the equation does not automatically give me my vertex. Right here, my vertex is given to me because it's in that graphing form. But in general form, I have to do a little bit of work. I'm going to use these coefficients a, b, c. And the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. And to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, I plug that into my function, the function value at negative b over 2a. Now let's tie this into previous knowledge. Our quadratic formula, we use our quadratic formula with our general form of our equation, x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Right here, this part of the quadratic formula gives me the x-coordinate of my vertex. And then to find, how do I ever always find a y? Well, I plug in an x and I find y. So I plug x into that value for x, negative b over 2a, into my equation and I solve for y. This part of my quadratic formula was the discriminant. It told me how many and what kind of solutions to expect. This part on its own helps me find the vertex of my parabola. So let's go ahead and do that here. I've got it in general form set equal to g of x, or it could be 0 if I wanted to think of it that way. And in this form, a is negative 1, because that's my a coordinate right there. b is negative 2, and c is 1, a, b, c. So we have a, b, c for this function. Now to find my vertex, I start by finding the value negative b over 2a. Well, negative b is the opposite of b, so that's going to be a positive 2 over 2 times a. So I have 2 over negative 2, which yields a negative 1. That's the x-coordinate of my vertex. To find the y-coordinate, how do I always find y? Well, I plug in a value for x. So I'm going to find g of negative 1, and I plug it into my equation minus a negative, or negative, times a negative 1 squared, minus 2 times negative 1, plus 1. So let's pay attention to how we deal with these variables. Negative 1 squared is a positive, negative times negative is a positive, times that negative out front, so I have a negative 1. Negative times negative is a positive, and then that's just plus 1. So that gives me 2 as the y-coordinate of my vertex. Um, so let's think about what this graph is going to look like. We have a vertex at negative 1, positive 2, so our vertex is here. This negative squared term tells me it's a reflection on the x-axis, so it's going to open down. Without finding any other values, without looking for, or you know what, if I plug in 0 for x, my y-intercept is 1. So I can, I can plot that as a point. There is a good estimation of my parabola. What else have we talked about on this page? Well, we talked about our axis of symmetry. So our axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, and the location of that axis of symmetry is x equals the x-coordinate of our vertex, because that's, that's where it is. x equals negative 1. And we have a peak here, so that's a maximum.
the maximum value of the function is 2 and it occurs where x is negative 1 because it happens at the vertex. Alright, so nothing really new there, but we filled in some blanks and learned some new information about our quadratic functions and their graphs. Now, I want you to remember that you've got control of this lecture. Pause it if you need to, re rewind and listen, um, make sure that you understand everything that we're going through as we work through this. Alright, so for each of these equations, I think we've got five examples. We are going to find the, all the information we're asked for and we're going to graph. Don't leave anything blank. Make sure you put an answer in each blank. So first I'm going to identify what form of my equation I have. I have two forms of my quadratic equation. I've got that standard graphing form and I've got general form. If it looks like it's kind of factored out, pulled apart, that is my standard or graphing form. When I have my equation in graphing form, I do not have to do any work for my vertex. My vertex shows up right there as h, k. Remember, my graphing form starts as x minus, so that's a positive 4 I've plugged in. When I know my vertex, I also know my axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry is going to be that equation, x equals 4. And I know the value of my maximum or minimum. Now let's think about which one of these we have. There's no negative out front, so my parabola is going to open upward. Let's go ahead and plot that vertex. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. It's going to open up, so that's a minimum function value. And the value is negative 1. That also comes from my vertex. I know all of this without doing any work. Another thing I know without doing any work, the domain of my function, it's quadratic, the domain is always going to be all real numbers, least to greatest, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of my function has a limit. The parent function has a limit of zero. This function, though, has been shifted down. So its limit is going to be that minimum value, negative one, and since I'm going up, that's a lower limit. Notice that I did not draw the entire parabola yet. I put in my vertex, I can go ahead and put in my axis of symmetry, that's part of my graph. Axis of symmetry, the equation here is x equals negative 1. To get my graph a little bit more exact, I need to know my intercepts. So let's think about how we find intercepts. Well, to find a y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. And to find x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0. It's going to be easiest to plug in 0 for x, so let's start there. So if I find f of 0, I have 0 minus 4 squared minus 1. Well, negative 4 squared is 16, and 16 minus 1 is 15. So where x is 0, y is 15. That's my y-intercept, and oh wow, that's going to be way up here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to guesstimate 15 is right about there. But I'm going to mark it so that I know that I used my values I found. Then x-intercepts, so these two things I'm finding down here. My x-intercepts happen where y is 0. Well, y is the same thing as f of x. So I set my function equal to 0. And one thing I notice is that I have something squared and I have a constant, so I can use my square root property to solve here. Let's do that. Let's move this one over. We're going to add it to move it to the other side. And then to unsquare something, I take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root, I have to remember plus or minus. So that sets me up to have two real solutions. The square root of 1 is 1, so I have plus or minus 1 equals, and that cancels and leaves me with x minus 4. So to find my two x-intercepts, I solve, I simplify these two equations. I'm going to add 4, so I have x is equal to 4 plus 1 or 4 minus 1, because when I add 4 to move that over, I've got 4 plus 1 and 4 minus 1. Well, that gives me a 5 and a 3, and I want to use those to complete ordered pairs as my x-intercepts. 
My math lab doesn't make you do this. I expect you to write these as ordered pairs so that I know that you know what you're talking about. All right, so we have our y-intercept. We plot our x-intercepts at 3 and 5. And all that's left is for us to complete our parabola. Try to make it a nice, smooth curve. Put your arrows on the end. Make sure that you use the points that you found to do your graph. Okay, let's go to the next one. This was our standard or graphing form. This next one is not in our standard or graphing form. That's in our general form of our equation. General form of the equation. Don't have the vertex. We've got to do a little work for it in the general form. We don't have the axis of symmetry. We do know whether we have a maximum or minimum. I've got that negative out front. That tells me my parabola has been flipped upside down. So I'm going to have a maximum value. Don't know what it is yet. Y-intercept is something that's easy when we're in general form. To find the y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So that's a 0, that's a 0. I've got negative 3. So my y-intercept, 0, negative 3. That's super easy in general form. X-intercepts are a little bit more work. Um, domain, always, always. Domain for a parabola, for a quadratic, is all real numbers. My range depends on my vertex. So we got what we know already. Let's go ahead and do our work to find the rest. Vertex. When we are in this form of our equation, our general form of our equation, we have to do negative b over 2a to find our vertex. Well, negative b is going to be a negative 8. 2 times a, a is negative 4. Negative 8 over negative 8 is a positive 1, so that's the x-coordinate of my vertex. And I always find y by plugging in an x value. So f of 1, negative 4, 1 squared, plus 8 times 1, minus 3. Well, 1 squared is 1, so that's a negative 4 plus 8 minus 3. Negative 4 and negative 3 is negative 7, plus 8 is a positive 1. So my vertex is at 1, 1. That tells me the rest of these answers except for my x-intercepts. I've still got to do a little bit more work there. My vertex is at 1, 1. It's right here. My y-intercept is at 0, negative 3. That makes sense because my parabola is flipped upside down. Um, my axis of symmetry goes through my vertex, so I can put that on my graph now. That axis of symmetry has an equation x equals, and x is always going to be equal to the x-coordinate of my vertex. My maximum value is right here. That y value gives my maximum value. So the value is 1, my maximum value. Range is defined. That's a limit. That's going to be an upper limit. So my range starts at negative infinity, finishes at positive 1, inclusive. And the only thing left to do is to find those x-intercepts. x-intercepts happen where y is 0. So I set my equation equal to 0, f of x is 0, negative 4x squared plus 8x minus 3, and I want to factor this if I can. Now when I factor, I never factor things with a negative squared term. It makes life way too hard. So I'm going to think about moving everything to the other side of the equation, do the opposite operation, and it changes the sign on everything. So I've got 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. I moved everything over to the other side, got my squared term to be positive, and now I want to see if I can factor. Now 4x squared can either be 2x times 2x or 4x times x. If I try 4x times x, I see my signs are going to be the same and they're both going to be negative because that's my middle term, so minus, minus. Well, I've got a problem here. Um, if I do 3 is prime, it's just 3 and 1. If I do 3 here, that's 4 times 3 is 12. If I do 3 here, 
that's a 4 and a 3, that's 7, not 8. So that's not going to work. So let's try again and break it apart as 2x times 2x to get me my 4x squared. Still, signs are the same. They're both negative. 3 is still prime. has to be 3 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 2, negative 6. Negative 2 and negative 6 is negative 8. That's what I'm after. So those are my correct factors. So I, zero factor property says to finish solving, I set each of those equal to zero. Um, 2x minus 3 equals 0. I add 3 to move it over. And then uh, this is 2 times x. The opposite multiplica of multiplication is division. Anything over itself is 1. So x equals 3 halves. That's the x-coordinate of one of my x-intercepts. 3 halves 0, where y is 0. y is 0. x is 3 halves. And then for this one, I get x equal to 1 half. So that's my other x-intercept, 1 half, where y is 0. So this teeny tiny skinny parabola, 1 half and 1 and a half is going to be right there. That works, though. That fits. I can sketch my curve arrows on the ends. Try to make it a curve and not a V. All right, so that works out lovely. Let me see if I can back us up a little bit so you can see more of the whole thing. And let's move on to number three. Okay, so stop and think. What form of the equation am I working with? Well, sorry, autofocus. <laughs> it is split apart. I've got that square with something, an expression going on inside. So once again, I am working with my um, standard or graphing form. of the equation. What things do I know when I'm using that standard or graphing form of the equation? Well, I immediately know my vertex. Right there. I know my vertex is at 3, negative 4. So if I want to put that on my graph, it's going to be right there. I know that my parabola is going to open up because I'm not flipping it upside down. There's not a negative out front which means it's going to look like this, and I have a minimum value. My axis of symmetry, let's try a different color for axis of symmetry and see if it stands out. Axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. X equals, that X coordinate is 3, so X equals 3 is my axis of symmetry. My minimum value is that y value, that function value, also part of my vertex. The value is negative 4. That's the smallest function value in my function. Domain is always, always all real numbers for quadratic functions. Range has a limit. This time it's a lower limit and I go up forever to positive infinity. I haven't finished graphing because before I finish graphing, I need to find my intercepts. I need to figure out the values for my x-intercept and my y-intercept. Y-intercepts always happen where x equals 0. So let's do that first. If we plug in 0 for x into our equation, right there, 0 for x, we have negative 3 squared minus 4. Negative times a negative is a positive 9. Minus 4 is 5. So where x is 0, y is 5. I write that as an ordered pair. Stick it on my graph, y-intercept. Now I expect two x-intercepts. My x-intercepts happen where y is 0. So I replace y with 0. And I say, all right, 0 equals x minus 3, quantity squared, minus 4. The easiest way to solve that is going to be my square root property. So I'm going to move that 4 over, add it to move it over. How do I unsquare something? Well, I take the square root. When I consider the square root of both sides, I have to do plus or minus because I don't know if my variable started out positive or negative. 
that's going to cancel and leave me with x minus 3 over here on the right. Square root of 4 is 2, so I've got plus or minus 2. So when I finish solving, x is equal to 2 plus 3 and negative 2 plus 3. Well, 2 plus 3 is 5, and negative 2 and 3 is 1. So let's see if that makes sense for our graph. If we put our x-intercept at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yep, they are balanced on the axis of symmetry. And I can connect all my dots. Everything makes sense. And I've got a nice parabola. Now notice if you if you put a plot a point and it doesn't look like it fits on a parabola, you've done something wrong. You need to stop and think and go back and see what went wrong. Don't just ignore it. Uh, don't draw some crazy shape because we know that these are quadratics, so the graph is always going to be that parabola shape. All right, two more examples to go. Remember to pause, rewind, sit and think about this if you need to. Um, in fact, I would encourage you to pause right now, see what you can do with number four on your own, and then restart to see if my information matches yours. Alright, I've got the general form of the equation which means I don't know the vertex yet, don't know the axis of symmetry. I do know that I have a um, minimum because this is going to open up since my squared term is positive, so I have a minimum, but I don't know what it is. Y-intercept is easy. If I plug in 0 for x, that is 0, 0, 9. So my y-intercept is 0, 9. Don't know that. Domain quadratic, so it's always this, don't know this yet. So in my general form, this is what I know right from the start. Okay, so let's start with finding our vertex. To find our vertex, we do negative b over 2a. Negative b is a negative 6. 2 times 1 is my 2a. And negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3. So that's the x-coordinate for my vertex. That negative 3 is also going to give me my axis of symmetry. Once we know x, we plug it into my function to find y. That's a positive 9, minus 18, plus 9. 9 and 9 is 18, minus 18 gets me to 0. So where x is 3, y is 0 x is negative 3, y is 0, excuse me, negative 3, 0. Look at that, my vertex is on the x-axis. If anything on the x-axis is an x-intercept, and since that's my vertex, that's going to be the only x-intercept. I don't have another one. So let's see what we've got. We have a y-intercept at 0, 9. That's going to be right there. We have an x-intercept here. I expect my parabola to open up, so I'm fine. I don't need any other points to figure out my graph. We're in good shape. Uh, what else do I know? I know we said our axis of symmetry is at negative 3. That goes on my graph. x equals negative 3 is my axis of symmetry. I know that my minimum value is the y value of my vertex, so the value here is 0. And that's going to be the limit for my range. We're opening up, so that's a lower limit. And that's all there is. All right, one more example, number five, and we're done. So here we go. Um, I guess I decided that this general form was the harder form, so we have an extra, um, extra example of the general form, which is probably true. We've been doing transformations of function and the graphing function a lot. So pause the video, see what you can do with this. Oops, I stuck that in the wrong spot. 
I got carried away. That's what happens when I don't talk my way through things. All right. Domain is all real numbers. Now, I threw that vertex up there like I knew what it was from the equation. I do not know what that was from the equation. I know that my parabola opens up because my squared term is positive. So that means that I have a minimum value. I don't know the value of my vertex. I have to come down here and do a little work to find that vertex. I find negative b over 2a. And then I plug that value in. Now that I know my vertex, I know my axis of symmetry. I know my minimum value is 2 because that's the y-coordinate of my vertex. Axis of symmetry comes from the x-coordinate of my vertex. Um, my y-intercept is 0, 3. My parabola opens up, so I want to point out something to you. Parabola opens up. The vertex sits above the x-axis. My range has a limit, this value 2, that's my lower limit for my range. What about x-intercepts? What are we going to do with that? Well, I'm sitting above the x-axis and going up, so I do not intercept the x-axis. So what I'm going to say here is that there are no real x-intercepts. No real x-intercepts. Graph does not cross the x-axis. What does that look like mathematically? Well, mathematically, since I don't get any real numbers here, I know that I'm going to have to use my quadratic formula to work out imaginary values for the x-intercepts. So let's take a second and practice that quadratic formula, and then we're going to be done for today. Negative b here, negative 2, the opposite of that is positive 2, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. That's my quadratic formula. Let's focus in here a little bit. So we've got our quadratic formula. Let's simplify that numerator. 2 plus or minus square root of my denominator is going to be 2. Well, inside my radical, two, negative 2 squared is positive 4, and then I've got minus 4 times 3 is 12, and immediately right here, that's my discriminant, and my discriminant value is going to be negative. The fact that my discriminant is negative tells me that I have imaginary numbers. 4 minus 12 is a negative 8. So I have two imaginary solutions because my discriminant is negative. Square root of a negative is an imaginary number. We want to go ahead and simplify that. So I've got 2 plus or minus over 2. What am I going to do with this square root of negative 8? Well, negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. And I think, does 8 have any perfect square factors? Yes, it does. 8 is 4 times 2. So I've broken it down. I can think of that as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And I can simplify everything I can. Well, square root of negative 1, that is my definition of i. Square root of 4 is 2. And I can't do anything about the square root of 2. It does not simplify. So let's finish this up. I have two terms in my numerator. They are both even, and I have a 2 in my denominator. So let's reduce this by breaking it apart. 2 over 2 plus or minus 2i square root 2 over 2. Anything over itself is 1. So there is a 1. There is a 1. 1 plus or minus i square root 2. Those are the values for my imaginary solutions to this equation. I can write them separately or I can leave them like they are. Stacked. 
means the same thing. I've got two solutions, but they're imaginary. Imaginary solutions don't show up on our graph. Did not leave my line blank. I put an answer in here. There are no real solutions, no real x-intercepts.